so far we've discussed default lighting and point lighting and in this video I'd like to talk about the remaining lighting which is the spotlight and the web light. Uh, first I'm going to go ahead and get rid of all our lights but keep the rest of the scene. I don't know why the exposure does that but I'm going to turn on default lighting and then just go adjust the exposure a little bit to go back to where it was. The rendering shows default lighting again. So adding a spotlight. I'm turning off the default lighting and I'm going to add it at the center of the room at 9 feet high. I'm going to aim straight down to the center of the room, but you so you have a, a light and a target. So if you click on the light, you can see the target down here, and you can see a hot spot circle and a fall off circle. And at this particular one, there's a very little difference between the hot spot and the fall off, so it, it falls off rel relatively suddenly. Now you can adjust both the hot spot and the fall off to get a more gradual change in light. Let's render it, and you can see that it creates a cone of light, and the fall off looks pretty drastic even then. So there's not much difference between this point and this point in terms of light. The properties are available in the spotlight, and the spotlight can be rotated and aimed in different directions to create a wall washer. It does not have any manufacturer's data associated with it, but you can control the light intensity in candela, the lamp color, and you really can't control the attenuation as far as I know once you've created it. Well, some of the properties of lights are not really available in the properties palette, but if I went spotlight on the command line and gave, let's try to give it maybe a different location. Let's say 60, 60, 108, and 60, 60, 0. So it's looking straight down again. You'll note at the bottom here, I've got a lot of things that can be controlled. So I can name it. I can control an intensity factor. I'm not really sure why that is there, but I can also, and let's just go through them. It's just a number zero to a maximum float. So you could multiply the effects of that light by some value. I'm going to choose one. Let's go to status. It's on or off. It's a Boolean status. Photometry. So I can change the intensity and the color. So if I change the intensity, this is where I enter the uh, flux or luminance. I'm going to keep it as it is. You can also change the color. So you can change the color. Uh, and it has a list here of keywords that you can use. If you want to type them in, the properties palette might have a way of choosing them as a drop-down list. So D65 is one of the lists. You'd have to enter it. I'm not sure whether you could just enter it. I think the capitalized part is all you have to enter. So I'd have to type F, C, W. And then over here, T, I, Z, X, H. So it's just single letter things. Or you can tell it the temperature in Kelvin. And the lower the temperature in Kelvin, it's reddish, and the higher the temperature in Kelvin, it's bluish. I'm going to keep it as is, and exit this level, and then you've got hot spots. So you've got, here's the diameter of the hot spot, and the fall off diameter. So you can change that, that's an angle from 0 to 160. For the shadow, it can be uh, off, sharp soft map or sampled. Um, right now I'm going to keep 
these things off, but if you did sample, uh, then you can change the shape and the samples and whether it's visible or not. I want to exit without changing that. Attenuation lets you hit a start limit and end limit. And the filter color is something you can add on to the light. So that's all the controls you have, but a lot of those controls are missing on the properties palette. So it's best to just go ahead and set them up when you create the light and not try to edit the light. So if I have two spotlights rendering it, gives me two circular areas. And these are relatively dim because I've got the exposure down. I'm not sure why it's not letting me get to it. There we go. Um, turning up the exposure would increase that room's illumination. So let's get rid of the spotlights. Oh, but before we do, note that all the shadows are sharp. Let's go render that again. And you can see that all those shadows, each shadow is sharp. Because they're still effectively point lights. If I were to right click and change that to a rotate gizmo, I could rotate that light in any direction. Let's turn ortho off. So I could rotate it in a uh, more controlled way and then render it. And you can see it, it does change the location of the spot. So you could aim it at a wall. Let's get rid of the spotlights. And finally, we go to web lights. So a web light is a light that draws its properties from a manufacturer's information. I'm not really sure there's a need to create a web light unless you need to use, need to simulate more accurately what a manufactured light is going to give you. But I'm not really sure how accurate you're going to be since the exposure is going to be dependent on that exposure slider. So I'm going to put it in the same place as the first downlight. And I'm going to specify the target location is straight down. Now I still have on the command line lots of things. So even though I started this in the ribbon, it's a command line interface. I can name it. I can change the intensity factor just like the other ones. I can change on-off status. In photometry, I can change the amount of light, but here's a web file. So unless you have a web file on your computer doing this, it's not going to get you anything. So the first thing you're going to need to do is go out to a manufacturer like Lithonia, and you're going to have to find for a particular fixture and download a an IES or one other kind of file for that. I have done so, and so I'm going to go ahead and choose web, B for web, and then I can enter a lot of this stuff, but it really doesn't do any good without a file. So file, and here, notice I'm not, I'm not given the opportunity to browse for the file. So you need to go ahead and use the tilde, that's right on the, that's a key on the left corner of the keyboard. And that enables you to browse. So I've already browsed myself to this folder. I'm going to choose this. And notice that the little circles here indicate there's two axes here. Uh, maybe an X, X, Z axis and, and a Y, Z axis. So once I choose that, again, I'm still in the command until I hit the exit. And then exit again. So now I get this. This ball now changes to roughly the shape of that light. The shape of the distribution. This is relative even distribution of light. So I'm going to render it and see how that affects. So again, very sharp shadows. Well, let's go back to the web page. 
this fixture is um, two foot by four foot. So light's going to be coming out of that fixture over the area of two foot by four foot. So even though the web file indicated the light distribution, it doesn't really affect the way the shadows are depicted. They're still sharp. Now, if that bothers you, and that's a big deal for you, then go ahead and do what I'm about to show you how to do. I'm going to delete this because I have no control over the shadow features once I place it. So I'm going to delete it and then do the same thing again. I'm going to create another web light, same location, same target. And this time I'm going to give it a shadow map that is sampled. That's A for sampled. And this allows me to give it a shape. And the shape is going to be rectangular as that luminaire is. And I'm going to use 48 for the length and 24 for the width. Exit that. Then I'm going to go to the web and get the file tilde and select the file. Hit the enter key a couple times. And now you see a little rectangle around that light fixture. So the shadows are going to look completely different when it's rendered. Notice that the shadows don't look any different uh, when, uh, when it's in the viewport. But when I render it, those shadows are going to be much softer. Now, the quality of the rendering is pretty rough here, but that rendering happened in only a few seconds. As the rendering times increase, that's going to look more natural. I'm going to go ahead and pick a maybe a coffee break quality. I'm not sure it's going to matter. I'm going to pause the video. So be sure when you uh, use coffee break quality that you actually take a break, go outside, maybe talk to somebody. I, I took a picture of our wisteria uh, while I was outside. I don't see much difference. Uh, what bothers me is what looks like speckles uh, where the shadow is. But that could be a, a, a measure of the resolution of the plot. And these are not intended to really be your file, even though you can save the rendering. Another option when you render is to render in the cloud. In order to do that, you have to, uh, let's go ahead and save the drawing. And then you have to render the current view or whatever, and you can start rendering. Now, Normally, you wouldn't be able to do that if you hadn't signed in, but you can see up here, I've, I'm signed in, and if, if I'm signed into my A360 account, I can do it. Now, there are different levels to rendering in the cloud, um, so you have to pay more cloud credits for more accuracy, but it can be done in the background. You're not thinking about it, but I certainly wouldn't want to do that as a final rendering because a lot of the other features about what makes rendering great have not been done to this scene. I, I'm just showing a single light, and this, this rendering is just to show the effect of that light and compare the shadows. And that's all I have about uh, cone lights, spotlights, and web lights. So that completes our lighting lessons. Thank you.